What makes a face stunning? Now, these are my opinions, which are really, really valuable. Beauty has to do with how something is constructed, how the light bounces off of something, the form, the texture. So beauty is so much. Let's look at one of the most beautiful actresses we can all agree, right? Godot, Gal Godot. If her skin wasn't flawless, would we still see her as so beautiful? Not necessarily. So beauty has so many little factors and we're going to deconstruct today. The first part of this deconstructing a face, let's start from the exterior, complexion. What is it about complexion? Well, what is complexion? Complexion is a natural color, texture, and feel of the skin tone that hits your eyes. That's complexion. And regardless of if it's pale and gorgeous, who's a pale, gorgeous actress? Pale, gorgeous actress. Emilia Clark. Beautiful. Texture. Who is a very dark, stunning actress? Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett. Amazing. Texture has nothing to do with what you think of the complexion. Texture has to do with, is it smooth? Is it delicate? Does it look soft? Does it look as though you can just run your fingers through the skin? That's the texture. Imagine you built a house, but you and you painted the house, but the paintwork isn't the best. There are uneven tones. You don't see beauty in that artwork, even if it's a beautiful house. The second part of deconstructing beauty is going to be the shape. And shape is the form or outline of the features of the face. So shape is the outline coinciding with what the light is doing. So an angled shape, Gal Gadot, versus a rounder shape, Emilia Clark. These different shapes has nothing to do with what's better. They're both beautiful with different shapes. Angled shape, curving shape. So I do a lot of teaching with medical aesthetics. And the one thing I talk about is everyone have either angled, curved, or combination. There's no other shapes in the face. Angle, curve, or combination of both. So the shape has to do with how the light bounces off and where the shadows are. So great makeup artists like Super Res can definitely highlight angles on someone who has a curved face. The, second, the third thing is the form. Think of shape without the lighting. The highs and lows, the way it drops, the width, the narrowness, the projection. That's the form. So the three things we touched on was the texture. We touched on the shape. We touched on the form. Now we can talk about the proportion. Proportion is putting all of these together. And proportion has to do with how the shape communicates with the form, communicates with the texture. So that proportion tells us that, well, if you have a thin angled face, but the texture is off and the shape is off, then we don't see that beauty. So beauty really encompasses all three factors. Again, I want to hit on Gal Gadot again because uh, she is stunning. Um, I loved her a lot more in Wonder Woman. Amazing, but I like more size on a female. So she had, I, I think, an, 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 a smidgen more size, and so I felt I felt everything really communicated. I think when Gal Gadot gets too skinny, it takes away from her true and natural beauty. But again, it's just my opinion, which really matters. Uh, she is a gorgeous girl. And then there's Amelia Clark. Now, these are the two actresses that I'm talking about because, you know, they are striking. No one can doubt that Amelia Clark is striking, but she has more of a curvy face. 
with a slight angle to the chin. So that's where I, 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 so this is where the proportion is. So curvy features, pointy chin, kind of brings that taper down. This reminds me a lot about my Asian community. A lot of my younger Asian patients, they really love to have that taper chin that pulls the jawline and pulls everything into the chin, creating that focal point right here at the tip. It makes for very, very soft, delicate feature. Now, not everyone can pull that off, but we're talking about shape, texture, and form. If we're not careful and we change the limits of those three parameters, then beauty starts to lose quite some bit. What is the, 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 the one of the ugliest, uh, 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 not skyscrapers, but tall buildings in Manhattan? I think it's an oval shape, it's brown, and it, it's been noted as not an attractive building, but the architect has been around for a while. So, so even though we have a beautiful or we have a really nice constructed building, it can still come off as kind of ugly or boring or, or, or not hitting the mark. So beauty is common in all of us based upon what we see, and we all have different opinions when it comes to beauty. However, without texture, form, and shape, you have to agree that you're not going to see the beauty that should be represented. On that note, I want to talk about what is not beauty. All right. So this may upset a few, but probably not. So what is not beauty? First, not beauty. Symmetry. I think symmetry is so overrated. There are many, many, many medical practitioners, injectors, who rave about symmetry, and, and, and they want to make the cheeks equal, and the and and each side of the nose equal, and the ears, and the jawline. Symmetry is really overrated. And we find that more common now in some of our um, filters or some, or some apps that allows you to put your left to your left and create a symmetrical image. So and if you really look at a symmetrical image of your face, you would find that now it's not that great. You don't love it that much. And you don't love it that much because your face is not an inanimate object. If you're talking about a table, a chair, a building, you want symmetry. But when you're talking about the human face, we don't necessarily want symmetry. Now, I am not saying that symmetry is not beautiful. It can be. But there's no one that's so symmetrical and so gorgeous. When you look at a magazine and a... And a and the model's face is very symmetrical, that is Photoshop. Because no one's face is 90 or 100% symmetrical. There's always one eye that's a little veering off, an angle downward. One nose is always tilted to one side. And that's because we smile on one side versus the other. So one side of the face is always more prominently stronger and tighter and shorter and more robust than the other side. If you love to put your hair on one side, then the side that's open is typically your high and more vibrant side. That's an indicator for you to see what side is your better side. So we always heard of, well, this is my better side, but that's the side that's more active. That's the side that has more elevation. That's the side that the jawline might be more robust or the hairline, the eyebrows might be angled or curved a little more. So beauty is not symmetry. Symmetry we can use as a guide, but it shouldn't be a destination. So we don't want to be symmetrical, but we want to be as beautiful as we are with the small imperfections and changes that we have that makes us beautiful. It's the imperfections that make us beautiful, by the way. What else is not beauty? Fibonacci patterns. So, Fibonacci, Fibonacci, Fibonacci. This is good in nature. 
This is good uh, with flowers and bee cones, honey bee cones. This is good with natural creations of geometric images that's formed in nature due to repeating sequences by that by that uh, organic matter's DNA construct. And so these structures maintain the best support for that organic matter, whether it's a plant or, or a fungus or anything of the sort. So Fibonacci patterns, we're not gonna find this in the face. You know, if you get a plumber with a really big belly and and you know, and you can actually make a Fibonacci pattern to show that, oh my God, this he is a Fibonacci pattern. But no, so that is not about beauty. Another thing that's not beauty is the golden ratio. We understand the golden ratio. A little, a little more, a little less. Golden ratio again is great for geometry, it's great for architecture. Golden ratio is great for someone who doesn't want to use their imagination to create beauty and just kind of want to stay, well, this was beautiful before and these 10 individuals who said it's beautiful is there, so let me use that to, to make my beautiful image. I'm not saying it's not beautiful, I'm just saying that when it comes to the human face and the human body, these geometric constructs do not represent beauty, they just represent what an agenda wants you to view and see as beauty. They also represent a guide to making something look a little better. But beauty is beyond better. This is why, you know, some of the most beautiful people um, do not have to change too much in their face. Also, some of the most beautiful people have done a lot of things in their face, but they're never symmetrical. The fourth thing is fractals or fractal patterns. This is very similar to Fibonacci, but it's really just patterns being created to coincide and make a beautiful object. Again, this is geometry. This is inanimate objects. This is, think of architecture. Your face is not a building. So if you think of architecture and that, then we don't want to put that on a face. The face changes. The fa every year the face goes through changes. The bone changes, the ligaments, the fascia, the mass layer, the muscles change, the, the cartilage change, it gets smaller. You know, so everything changes within the face. We do not want to add geometric beauty to moving naturally beautiful, youthful, human face. The last thing here is that physical beauty is not everlasting. Again, uh, as I've always said, we can slow it down, but physical beauty changes. But that's great because it means that every few years we have a different look. We have a more vibrant look. We have a, 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 an appearance that we want. We're not stuck looking the same way at 25 until we are 100 years old. You know, we are, we're moving through changes and we're challenged to maintain an image that we find acceptable and visually pleasing to ourselves and to others. So I love the fact that the human face changes over time, whether you do medical aesthetics or not. We're always changing. The challenge is to look your best, always feel great about yourself. Don't worry about what someone else looks like. Don't fall into the premise of Fibonacci patterns, fractal patterns. Don't allow someone to use protractors and different equipment on your face to get symmetry on the face. This is laughable. This is really not the best case scenario. And uh, many injectors who adopt this tend to put it aside. And it's not used often. Uh, sometimes there are reasons why these, these things are promoted. Um, there's a lot of political aspects to beauty. And you have to remember that you are an individual, you are unique, your beauty is not 
what is made by someone else. Your beauty is taking what you have and making it just the way you want it. That's it for this episode on deconstructing beauty. Let me know how you feel in the comments below. Let me know if you feel your cheeks, your jawline, your nose. Let me know what you think about your face and what you think is best about your face. Send me your pictures and let me know what you think about your own beauty. We are all beautiful in our own way. But what about that resting bitch face? Next episode.